NBC Sports, home of Super Bowl 56, welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Performing tonight's national anthem, the lead singer of Tank and the Bangas, New Orleans' own Grammy-nominated Miss Tariana Tank Ball. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave oh the land of the free and the Let's hear it one more time for Miss Tariana. Beautiful rendition of our national anthem. We get set for kickoff and once again to the sideline and Michelle Tafoya. Well, Mike, each of these teams came into November with a promising 5-2 and two record, but this month has been rough. The Saints have lost three in a row, and the Bills are coming off a 41-15 drubbing at the hands of the Colts. But Bills wide receiver Stefan Diggs told me we have to stay off the roller coaster, not get too high or too low. But if a loss like that one doesn't motivate you, I don't know what will. Now on the other side, Saints safety Malcolm Jenkins said his team needs to focus on the little things and ignore the big picture. He told me if you focus on the fact that we're five and five and it's been a while since we were in this position, well, that can easily spiral out of control. Then you don't respond well. So control the little things, effort, communication, small tasks. Win this rep, this drive, that's as far out as we have the privilege of viewing. Mike, he said, we don't have the luxury of looking at the big picture. But we do, Michelle, so why don't we for the Saints in terms of the division? They've beaten Tampa once. They'll get them in Tampa on a Sunday night mid-December. They're two back in the loss column, and Tampa's got a difficult game this week at Indianapolis. Not out of the question, but the Saints are going to need to come up with a big effort shorthanded. As for Sean McDermott's Buffalo team, they play New England twice in the next four weeks. So they try to get the win and hope that Tennessee can help them out when they play the Patriots on Sunday. We welcome those of you who just watched the Raiders win in Dallas 36-33. So two road teams have won on this Thanksgiving. Buffalo will try to make it a clean sweep. Mike Tirico, Drew Brees, Michelle Tafoya. Glad you're with us here from the Caesars Superdome. Tyler Bass will kick it off for Buffalo. And off we go on Thanksgiving night from the Dome in New Orleans. Kickoff return by Deontay Harris. And he will not get to the 20-yard line. So let's meet the Saints offense. Trevor Simeon, Northwestern. Tony Jones Jr., Notre Dame. Marquez Callaway, Tennessee. Deontay Harris, Assumption College. Trey Quan Smith, UCF. Garrett Griffin, Air Force Academy. Teron Armstead, University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Calvin Throckmorton, Oregon. Eric McCoy, Texas A&M. Cesar Ruiz, Michigan. James Hurst, UNC Chapel Hill. Hurst is in there. No Ryan Ramchek, the right tackle. Those of you who just are tuning in, the Saints are without their top two running backs in Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram, both with knee injuries. Tony Jones Jr. will get the first carry, and it will be a two-yard gain to the 19-yard line. So Trevor Simeon is the quarterback. 
Went to Northwestern. He's 29 years old, seventh round pick of Denver. He became the guy to follow Peyton Manning out in Denver, and he did that for a couple of years. Since then, he's bounced around Minnesota, the Jets, and Tennessee, and then he was on the practice squad with the Titans, and when Drew Brees broke his ribs, or somebody else broke him for you. <laughs> Simeon was signed to the practice squad, kept around in the offseason, and he's in because of the Jameis Winston injury. Ty Montgomery tries to get to the edge, and nothing doing. You hear the Bills fans, Matt Milano the tackle, here are the rest of the Bills defenders. Gregory Russo, Miami. Ed Oliver, Houston. Harrison Phillips, Stanford. Jerry Hughes, TCU. Tremaine Emmett, Virginia Tech. Matt Milano, Boston College. Tredavious White, LSU, DBU. Jordan Poyer. Oregon State. Micah Hyde, University of Iowa. Levi Wallace, Roll Tide. Taron Johnson, Weber State. Johnson's the nickel corner. They play a lot of five DBs. Simeon throws underneath on third down. It's complete, but Traquan Smith will be about three yards shy of the first down, and the Saints' struggles on the opening drive continue. Just three points on opening drives all season for New Orleans. That's a nice job by that Buffalo defense. Two run plays to start this game. You knew that New Orleans would come out and try to test them there. They got them into third and long and are able to get off the field three and out. Blake Gilligan has done a very good job kicking for the Saints, replacing Thomas Morstead, the longtime punter here. Marquez Stevenson for the inactive Isaiah McKenzie, making his NFL debut. The rookie back deep to receive. Catches it at the 24. Works up the sideline. Gets hit hard at the 35, but holds on to it. Zach Bone with the big hit on special teams. And here comes the Buffalo offense. Josh Allen, Wyoming, go Pokes. Devin Singletary, FAU. Emmanuel Sanders, Southern Methodist University. Stephon Diggs, Maryland. Cole Beasley, SMU. Dawson Knox, Hotty Toddy. Deion Dawkins, you already know University. Ike Butker, Iowa. Mitch Morse, Missouri. Cody Ford, Oklahoma. Darrell Williams, Oklahoma. Williams over there at right tackle. Spencer Brown remains on the COVID-19 list. As per usual, the noise picks up in the dome. Allen starts from the 35. And Josh to work right away. It's complete to Diggs. Got out of two tackles. Diggs down the sideline. 14 yards at a first down for Stephon Diggs at the 49. So they shift. They shift Diggs across the, line, uh, the formation. What does that do? It actually gets Marshawn Lattimore as the corner left behind. So now you got Paulson Adebo, the rookie from Stanford, on Diggs. As a, from a matchup perspective, expect Marshawn Lattimore to be on Diggs all game. Nice job opening play to get Diggs on the other corner. And we're seeing Emmanuel Sanders in motion. A pitch to Matt Breida who will see more time. They like his speed at the running back spot. Six on the gain to the 45-yard line. So Josh Allen, the runner-up to the MVP. Seven years ago, he was the quarterback at Reedley Community College in California. Now he's the MVP runner-up last year. Good numbers this year, but Drew didn't feel like he's played his best football two of the last three games. Yeah, you know, and, and as, a, as a young gunslinger, which, you know, is self-proclaimed, as he said, you know, looking up to Brett Favre growing up, you, you kind of get in this world where, man, you start making some big plays down the field, and you think that that stuff just happens all the time. Second and four, he will keep it. Many designed runs with Allen, becoming wise with his use of the rules and taking few hits first down at the 39-yard line. Yeah, this is what Josh Allen does so well. A lot of their run game is the read option where he's reading defenders and he has the ability to hand it off to the running back or keep it. He decides to keep this one. And he's one of those guys with his big, big physical size where a lot of times he's running up between the tackles, not just outside. He is second on this team in rushing yards. 340 coming into tonight. Bills on the move. First down, Allen. Complete digs. To shy at first down mark, gain a nine and a half against this New Orleans defense. Cam Jordan, Sea Town's finest. David Oyemater, Lagos, Nigeria. Shaheem Tuttle, Midway Elementary. Carl Grandison, Grant High School. Caden Ellis, Idaho. Mario Davis, Arkansas State. Quan Alexander, LSU. Boston Debo, Stanford. Malcolm Jenkins, The Ohio State. Marcus Williams, University of Utah. Marshawn Lattimore, The Ohio State. Good defense 
but not getting takeaways lately. Just one in the last three games. Breida inside run first down to the 21 yard line. So Matt Breida played three years in San Francisco was in Miami last year signed by the Bills and after the Indianapolis game Buffalo want to see more of him so much so that Zach Moss is inactive for the Bills tonight. Like the Bills must have listened to us in the pregame with the keys to victory. Just a short, efficient passing game mm -hmm. and, and establishing the run game. They've done a nice job of that thus far. Can I take some credit for that too? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, no, no. I said us. <laughs> First and ten. And here is Brita again. Get to the 16-yard line. Devin Singletary has been the main back for the Bills, sharing the load with Moss, but now instead Brita will play that role. And now Singletary comes back in, the third-year player from Florida Atlantic. It's an important start for Sean McDermott. He wanted to see his team play some good fundamental football. Felt they were looking for the home run plays too often over the last couple of games. And a sharp opening drive, exactly what he hoped for. Here is Singletary trying to get to the left, strung out by the defense. Lattimore will be the one to ride him out of bounds and set up third down and a couple. Yeah, you know, so much of the opening drive, really for any offense, is to assess how this defense is going to play you. How are they going to play you when you're in 11 personnel or 21 personnel or 12 personnel? So always in that opening sequence, you're doing a lot of things. You're moving receivers in motion. How do they motion adjust? How are they matching up against us? And they're doing a nice job of, of mixing in a lot of different run concepts, short passing game here on third down. This is when man-to-man, -man, these corners go to find their matchups. Beasley in motion. Allen trying to run. Good hurdle by Allen, who's so proficient at leaping over, folks. First and goal for Buffalo to the seven-yard line. His center, Mitch Morse, helped pave the way. Yeah, this is just a dimension that most offenses just don't have because you don't have a guy that's as good an athlete as Josh Allen is such a run threat. This is really like an outside <laughs> zone play with a pulling guard, and Josh, Josh Allen just reads it like he would a running back. Stays behind his, his guard block, hurdles a guy. We see that at least a couple times a year from him. Such a great athlete in space. Green two tight ends, and Gabriel Davis is one of the receivers. First and goal, pitch Brita on the edge. He's tripped up. This gets back to the line of scrimmage. Cam Jordan had a little bit of the penetration for the New Orleans defense. Star standout in his 11th year in the league. It'll set up second down. Yeah, if you're going to run that toss crack, probably want to do it away from Cam Jordan. You know, he's such a great veteran. He, he feels when, hey, this guy's a little close to me. It looks like he's going to down block me. I'm going to go ahead and fight through this block and make the play. New Orleans has been one of the better red zone defenses in the league. Trying to keep the Bills to a field goal. From the seven, Allen swings it underneath, taken in, and to the goal line and in for Dawson Knox, and a Buffalo touchdown. TD number six on the season for the tight end who continues to emerge. Yeah, and this is just tackling here. You know, it's a nice uh, pass concept, but Marcus Williams is right there, the free safety to make the tackle. you got to make that tackle, get him to third down. Seven yards on the touchdown and a very good opening drive from the Bills. They look better on that drive than they looked almost at any point against Indianapolis a week ago. Tyler Bass for the extra point. And knocks it through. So halfway through this opening quarter, it's become one of the good combinations. Quarterback to tight end in the league. Josh Allen to Dawson Knox. 7-0. Buffalo. And tours worldwide to nurture and perpetuate the art of New Orleans jazz, representing that famous spot in the French Quarter, Preservation Hall. Have you ever been to a concert there, Mike? I have not, but you have, I, I know. I need to take you. It's really good, huh? It's legendary. So many of the roots of jazz music, of course, just a few blocks away from here. Deontay Harris kick return once again, well covered. Doesn't get to the 20 for the second time. Tackled at the 16 yard line. We mentioned Sean Payton's got a different quarterback than Trevor Simeon. He's got a lot of different 
on that play sheet because there's no Alvin Kamara. There's no Mark Ingram, both out with knee injuries. Adam Troutman, the tight end, has gone to injured reserve. He was injured last week. Ryan Ramchick, highest paid right tackle in the league, is out with a knee injury again. And on the defensive side, they're missing Marcus Davenport. There's so much in the Saints team to deal with without even mentioning Jameis Winston, the quarterback who was lost for the year with his knee injury. Tony Jones Jr., the carry, and he's going to gain about three yards. So, Drew, what can they do? What's the game plan to try to find a way to win without all those offensive weapons? Yeah, well, the, the first thing you need to do is get your tempo back. You know, that's something that, as you turn on the film from the last three weeks in, in, with this losing streak, they have not been able to get anything going in the first three quarters of any of those games. And a lot of it was just tempo, you know, in and out of the huddle, up and down. They play with a lot of personnel groups. There's typically a lot of shifts and motions. And yet, as Sean Payton would say it, we're going to come into this game and call the plays, call the songs they know by heart, call the plays that they know they're confident with so they can play fast and play confident, and that should make a big difference. Ty Montgomery there from Trevor Simeon. Yeah, Ty Montgomery, you know, he's going to play an interesting role in this game. He plays wide receiver, plays the slot. But he can come in the running back, and, and in Alvin Kamara's absence, he really serves that Al Alvin Kamara kind of joker role. He can do a little bit of everything. Of course, Montgomery has running back in his background. Think back to his Green Bay days. First first down of the game for the Saints. Simeon play action is complete. A good broken tackle by Traquan Smith will take him down to the 42-yard line. Back-to-back -back first downs, a gain of 14. Now this is nice, nice play selection here. So play action. Traquan runs up, crosses face as you would teach the receiver to do. Nice, accurate throw. Keep the chains moving. Hey, Bobby, Bobby. Go, go, go. Ready. From the 42 yard line. Penalty flag before the Tony Jones carry. And a false start on New Orleans. First time we'll hear from Brad Allen, our referee tonight. False start on the center. Five yard penalty. Still first down. It's Eric McCoy. You mentioned tempo. Let's get a little bit deeper on that. I remember the games being up here and you were down there on the field and the Saints, you guys would just go so fast, so fast. Why can't they get to that tempo right now? Yeah, well, one of the differences is when, when in previous years, uh, when, when I was a quarterback here, I would point out the Mike ID, which basically is, is designating to the offensive lineman who the fifth man is that they're blocking, who they're going to in the run game, et cetera. Uh, that switched this year to the center's responsibility and it just takes a little bit longer. From the 37, Simeon throws underneath and in and out of the hands. An incomplete for Deontay Harris as the speedster was crossing. Yeah, and, and these are the opportunities that the Saints are going to have to hit on tonight. They're going to have to have near flawless execution. As you can see here, Deontay Harris, he's one of the electric players on this offense that's not injured right now. And when you get an opportunity to get the ball in his hands in space, He's certainly a guy who can do something with it. Harris, five foot six. Second and 15, and a screen set up. It's Montgomery. Good blocking ahead of Montgomery, and he'll be close to the first down, too shy of it. Jordan Poyer makes the tackle. It'll be third and two for New Orleans. A really nice job by Sean Payton here. He loves his screen passes, whether it's to the running backs out of the backfield, receiver screens. Right here, it's a rare zone coverage, shell coverage by the Bills. So they're hanging back. They're able to get blockers out front and get a nice chunk. Get them in a third manageable situation. This is where they need to be. Third and tens aren't going to get it done today. you got to be third and seven or shorter. Empty backfield, third and two. Bills bring four. Simeon. Almost escaped the sack, but could not. Mario Addison comes up with his team-leading fourth sack of the season. Yeah, you know, one of the things we, we noticed on film from watching this is watch how deep Trevor Simeon sets here in his drop. You know, he's nearly 10 and a half yards deep. For an offensive tackle, that's very, very difficult because you have an idea of where that quarterback is stepping up and, and settling himself in the pocket. And typically that's in that eight and a half to nine yard range. You know, when you get to 10, 10 and a half yards deep, makes it a lot tougher on an offensive tackle.
to keep the defensive ends off him. No flag. Return by Stevenson. Across the 25, and he'll be brought down at the 27 yard line. 321 left, opening quarter on this Thanksgiving night 2021. Glad you're spending it with us. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We have an all-new show tonight after the game with Will Farrell, Paul Rudd, plus thank you notes. Back to you, Mike and Drew. All right, Jimmy, looks looking forward to that. While you're sneaking over to the refrigerator for that extra piece of apple pie that nobody is gonna know you took because it was late at night. Enjoy Jimmy with a fresh new show, including Will Farrell and Paul Rudd. First down give, it is Brita doing a nice job of eluding tackles to gain about four yards, just past the 31-yard line. They definitely started off this game with a commitment to the run. And that's eight rushing plays compared to three passing plays so far in this game for Buffalo. And a lot of them are complemented with some sort of an RPO or a read option. But this is this is exactly what they need to do to start this game. Rita given five on first down. We'll get it on second down with a fullback leading the way. And we'll get uh, to about 32. And you know, Drew, it's a good point that you bring up about the runs with the running back because as you watched last week against Indianapolis, they really were not committed to the run game. No, and, and they got down in that game 24 to 7 by mid to late second quarter. And it's easy when it feels like the game's getting out of hand just to abort the game plan and uh, we got to throw it now. But they were still very much in a position where they could have fought and clawed their way back in that game if they just would have stuck with the plan. They totally abandoned the run after that and they just started airing it out. Nothing like the noise in the dome. Third and two, Allen hitching. Nothing open. But his legs take care of it at Josh Allen first down. Started to slide a bit early there, but was beginning the slide past the mark. First down, Buffalo. Yeah, so watch Josh Allen here. He's looking to the right. He's looking at this matchup with Stefan Diggs on Lattimore. Lattimore does a nice job. So what does Josh Allen do? He, he, he does what he always does. He takes <laughs> exactly. off, he scrambles, he extends the drive. Down from the 38, play action, nothing deep. One of his receivers fell down, so he just throws it at the legs of Dawson Knox. And a couple of receivers deep in the secondary, one of them went down, and there was nothing good that was going to happen on that play. Yeah, he had Emmanuel Sanders and Stephon Diggs. It looked like they were going to both run deep over routes and try to kind of use each other to pick their defenders. Unfortunately for them, Emmanuel Sanders fell down. And then this little chit chat and big reaction at the end of the play. After the first incompletion of the evening by Allen, David Onyemata made sure he knew. Second and 10, it is Brita on the edge. Terrific job by PJ Williams. He saw it, diagnosed it, and shut it down. Third and long coming up. Yeah, nice shot by P.J. Williams here to the left part of our screen. P.J.'s a veteran player, plays a lot of different positions, safety, nickel, down around the box here. He senses that toss crack. He knows he has to beat the tight end's block. Does a nice job getting tackled for loss there, put him into a third wall. Allen, pressure from behind. His college teammate at Wyoming, Carl Granderson, was rushing, got knocked down, rolled into Allen. Didn't look like he was going low intentionally, but it serves the purpose, and Buffalo will punt. Yeah, nice job by Granderson here, playing uh, in the absence of Marcus Davenport. Really nice move, speed rush to the outside, kind of slips, and then <laughs> that was just a sweep the leg right there. Cobra Kai. The slip was caused by Deion Dawkins. The tackle <laughs> tackled him around the head. After one, Buffalo 7, New Orleans nothing. NBC Sunday Night Football on Thanksgiving night continues after these messages. But that's every game in the Dome, right? It's <laughs> even the Bills fans, Bills Mafia, 
traveled in very, very big numbers. Walking down Canal Street today on the plane coming down from Michigan on Tuesday. Like 60 Bills fans who were connected through Detroit to come spend their holiday weekend here in New Orleans. Who do you think is having more fun? The, the Houdat Nation or the Bills Mafia? Uh, the Mafia is always having a good time. <laughs> well, that's because they got out of the snow. That's why. Hawk had a rush to get that away. A lot of return room for Harris up the sideline. He'll jump out of bounds. A nice return to the 38. That's where the Saints will take over in 30 seconds. After this from AWS. A lot of kids up in Buffalo were running around after Thanksgiving dinner pretending to be Josh Allen. Well, Trevor Simeon back in the day was running around pretending to be Brett Favre in Buffalo. <laughs> because Trevor's parents are from Buffalo, so he had some early Thanksgivings up there. They then, then moved to Florida, but uh, that's where Trevor had some of his early Thanksgivings. And now he's the quarterback of the Saints on Thanksgiving night. Take it over at the 38-yard line. And to the air it is little Jordan Humphrey, who's anything but little. He's 6'4", 225. And he's got a gain right around the first down marker at the 48. Little Jordan Humphrey caught a touchdown last week against Philly as well. Probably going to have a more elevated role in the Saints offense as things go along here. He's a big target, a guy that can play inside and outside, good blocker as well. You know, these young Saints wide receivers are really going to need to step up today, make some plays for their quarterback. Just shy of the first down. Needing inches, Tony Jones Jr. gets it to midfield. First down for the Saints. Here's Michelle. Well, Mike, this past summer, Teron Armstead partnered with Scholars, a tutoring and educational organization, to open a New Orleans location. The Education Center provides students with programs that foster lifelong growth and learning. Armstead said education serves as the nucleus of every person. It means everything to me. It's a goal and a passion of mine. It's so good to see Armstead using his profile, as so many of the Saints do here in New Orleans, especially for the cause of education. Simeon first down, trying to set up the pass to Montgomery, but nothing doing there as Buffalo was all over it. And I'll bring up second down. That was tr tr Tremaine Edmonds flying up the middle here. It's, it's not a pressure, but basically he reads the play action. You know, and at times you kind of feel, you feel that hole open up and you just continue on to the quarterback. He was a guy they really missed last oh. week, Mike. You talk about you know giving up 260 yards rushing. You know he's a difference maker when he's out there. He is sideline to sideline, definitely a physical presence for them. Second and ten, Simeon quickly to Montgomery, and that wasn't going to go too far with Milano reading it as well. Pass incomplete. Montgomery also coming back from injury. He had a broken finger a couple of weeks ago. And you know, it's the plays like this for the Saints offense that you really need to complete. You know, so much of the Saints offense with Sean Payton is the passing game is an extension of the run game at times. Ball's getting out of your hand quickly. You're completing those balls in that five to seven yard range that's going to get you into third manageable situations. You don't complete it. Here you are at third and ten, which is a tough, tough out. And they're going to run on third and ten. And Montgomery going to try to get there. He'll be... About three yards short at the 42. Let's see what Sean does here on fourth down. It's yeah. a game where you need field position, but you also are going to need to take some risks. <laughs> I can almost guarantee you Sean Payton is going for it. Okay. <laughs> In a game like this, you know you got to steal a possession. He's going to look at this as an opportunity to steal a possession. And maybe try to draw him off sides the first time. But certainly kind of have that play call in mind that's your go-to in this situation. Well, when you were with the Saints, you guys had the greatest of stolen possessions. The onside kick to start the second half of the Super Bowl victory over the Colts. Fourth and two, and they will go for it with a run with Jones. No chance. Mario Addison, who had a sack earlier, comes up with a tackle for loss here. And the Saints are denied and hand Buffalo good field position at the 46. The Bills defense maligned last week. Step it up on Thanksgiving night. We mentioned Jameis Winston hurt, Trevor Simeon starting. Taysom Hill is in an emergency backup role. He has a foot injury, so it's the same role he played last week. He's active, available, but not there to use in spots where you might see him, like the play that just happened. Would have been an ideal Taysom Hill 
down in distance. First down for Josh Allen to Diggs. And Stefan will be thrown out of bounds here at the 48 yard line. Back to that fourth down play. Yeah, so, so you watch this. First off, watch the center snap it, and the rest of the linemen don't really move. So they were obviously not ready for that snap. Maybe it was a hard count trying to draw them off sides. But Eric McCoy snaps it. Nobody's ready. That's why you get all the penetration. And, you know, fourth and two, such a critical moment to be able to convert that and sustain the drive. Got to be able to get on the same page. That has nothing to do with injury. Second and three, Singletary runs inside. Devin will get about a yard. Pete Werner, the rookie out of Ohio State, the second round pick, made the tackle. It's another third down for Buffalo coming up. Been good on third down in the early going here tonight. Another third and short for Buffalo. This is when this is when the Saints typically pay a lot of man, but they're definitely confused right now. Allen on the boot as Gabriel Davis wide open. Beautiful play design. Davis out of bounds at the 20. It's a gain of 26, and the Bills enter the red zone. The Saints, the Saints are confused here, misaligned. Look, look at Marcus Williams pointing at Marshawn Lattimore. You got Marcus Williams having to run out and cover a receiver. Obviously confusion there. Nobody covering the tight end. So these are the mistakes that just can't happen for the Saints right now. You get the, you get the fourth down, miscommunication on the snap. Can't get lined up there. Bills taking advantage of the field position from the 20. Allen gets it out quick. Dawson Knox caught the touchdown earlier. Wrapped up just a yard. Demario Davis, all pro a couple of years ago. One of the top linebackers in the middle of any defense in the league with that tackle. Yeah, Demario Davis, ever since getting signed by the Saints in 2018, has been such a mainstay, has not missed a game. Heart and soul, that defense leader has become such a, a, a versatile player too. Run-stopping linebacker who's developed into a very, very good pass rusher as well. Somebody who never leaves the field for the, the Saints defense. Here's second and nine, Allen Breida out of the backfield underneath. He's gonna be tough to cover in those spots. I really love what options he brings and juice he brings to this Buffalo offense. Third and three coming up. Yeah, we've seen his speed getting to the edge in the run game. Here he is out of the backfield, foot in the ground, get the ball in his hands. It's such a dangerous element when you have a guy like that. It's as good a receiver out of the backfield as he is a runner. You gotta love the way Buffalo has looked here offensively. It's been crisp, short passing game. Allen's been accurate, seven of eight on the night. A third and three with five in the pattern, the pressure coming. Allen tries to take off, but he will not get there. Caden Ellis, who made his first start of the year against Tennessee, the third-year player from Idaho, comes up with a stop that'll bring the field goal unit on for Buffalo. That's a really nice job by the Saints defense. You know, third and short, you're getting a lot of man-to-man -man coverage from the Saints in, in that situation. All the Saints corners, are that's when they really go and match their guys, right? Marshawn Lattimore on digs, everyone going to get their guys. That was really a coverage sack there. Everyone's covered. Allows the, the pass rush to go get Josh Allen. Bass, who's had a very good season, two misses last week in the really windy conditions in Orchard Park. Pure on that one. And the Bills had a field goal to their earlier touchdown. 10 0 for the road team. Seventy degrees in New Orleans on this Thanksgiving night, and you look at the Crescent City with our aerial coverage. Brought to you by Geico. Holiday greetings to all of you wherever you might be enjoying. As you look down at the Caesars Superdome, opened in 1975, 47th season, and the best part of tonight, Drew Brees needed a credential to get in here. <laughs> <laughs> No team bus, you know. Although your face may have just been your credential, I think you're welcome <laughs> in this building anytime. They didn't recognize me with a suit on. <laughs> Said nothing here. Deontay Harris with the kick return. Buffalo's covered the kickoffs well 
giving this struggling New Orleans offense a long field. You know about the boil down here. If you talk your food, New Orleans been a slow boil getting this offense cooking. Three opening drive points as we're now through November. They didn't add to that tonight. And 24 points in the first quarter, fourth fewest in the league. Now, after the first quarter, things kick in, especially the last three weeks in the fourth quarter, late third and the fourth, Sean Payton has been able to get the offense into a rhythm, but starting has been a problem, and starting has always been a strength of the Saints offense. We just have not seen it, Ready. Ready, especially here in the last five weeks. Tony Jones Jr., the carry, gain of a couple of yards. Uh, you live this. Sean Payton has that uh, that big play card. I like to call it an IHOP menu. It's as big as anything you can ever find with all these plays on there. But the quarterbacks sit down and try to identify which plays. You guys call it a dot meeting? Is that right? A dot meeting, yeah. yeah. So it's the night before the game. We're in the hotel, and, and starting quarterback basically goes through each section. Play action, third down, the red zone, et cetera, et cetera. And you just give him your favorite play calls, the ones that he has to call in the game. Ready. 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 So Simeon now doing that. Second and eighth, the Simeon pass is complete. First down was achieved by Trey Quan Smith with forward progress, but by the time he, he held the ball and completed it, the act of that catch, he was a half yard shy. So it'll be third and less than a yard coming up. Yeah, and it's you know, really the way the way this get the, the as far from a play calling perspective, this is exactly what I would have expected from the Saints. It's a commitment to the run, and it's not explosive runs, but it's just let's just dent the defense, dent the defense. Take advantage of, of, of some intermediate passing game. Every now and then it's a play action to take a shot. It's a screen. But the ability to sustain some drive, try to wear down this defense a little bit and go down and, and score some points to keep keep up with, with the Bills, Bills offense. I think the, the Saints defense is doing a nice job right now with this bend don't break philosophy. They know that they know that the Bills offense is going to come in, try to run the football, short passing game, but if they can keep them out of the end zone, that's going to be the key. And now the, the Saints offense just has to keep up. And Tony Jones there, the forward progress of the ball, try to get it almost to the far side of the 31 yard line from where the drive started. Of course, the yellow line, as you know, is not official. Jones wasn't able to just move forward with the ball and he is just a link or so short and sits up fourth down and Sean Payton sending tight ends in the game here he's going to go for it back up at his own 31 down 10 nothing there you see the fourth and inches when you look at the chances of converting it he's disappointed with the spot Jones wasn't able to fight through, so let's see what they do on fourth and inches. Simeon's going to keep it, and he'll get the first down out to the 32-yard line. I want to come back to that dot meeting you talked about with the quarterbacks. I thought Sean told us something interesting yesterday. He said, week one, I'm sitting down with Jameis Winston. We're doing the dot meeting. And Jameis said, yeah, I like that play. And I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. And he liked everything. It, it is, and I put you in a tough spot here, but it's a little bit different because you and Sean had a decade-plus relationship. Now it's new quarterbacks. He's trying to get a sense for what's going to work for them and what they like as well. The 32, Simeon on play action. Again, that deep drop. Deep throw is incomplete. Trying to get to Traquan Smith. And one of the best in the business, Tredavious White, was there on the coverage for Buffalo. Yeah, this is one of those play actions we're talking about where they're going to take a shot every now and then. He did a nice job setting it up with the run game. Unfortunately, man, just missed that a little bit behind him. Tredavious White, though, great recovery. You see how he just gets his hand in right at the last minute. You know, there's a reason he's one of the elite corners in this league. Traquan Smith had a couple steps on him initially, but he's got great makeup speed, great ball awareness. He's able to knock it out of his hands. First team All Pro in 2019, second team All Pro. He's back in Louisiana from Shreveport. Simeon. Passes high and incomplete. He's set up third down. Because he's missed on his last couple of throws. Yeah, just a straight drop back. It's a right to left read. Nobody's open. Here comes little Jordan. That's just a throw. You gotta gotta find a way to complete. Keep the chains moving. You gotta stay out of these third and tens. 
This is not where you want to be with this defense. This one they tune up the pass rush and they're able to play more shell. Yeah, you saw there Tredavious White down on that play. Just talk about how good he is at checking his leg. Step out for a second. Just talked about one of the best corners in the league, Tredavious White. You can see how frustrated and emotional he was when he came off here. Watch the left leg right there with White. And that's what they were looking at when he was on the ground. He tried to hop and walk on it, then went on the ground. 30, bottom of your screen. Dane Jackson, second year player, comes in in his stead. Third and 10 for Simeon. Pressured, hit as he threw, and incomplete. Straight through shot on Simeon from Ed Oliver. A big inside defensive tackle with the hit on Simeon ruled incomplete. And watch number 91 right here. Fights across the center's face. Gets in Trevor Simeon's way. He's going to throw the shallow cross right there. Saints are going to have to run for an additional 10 yards or so to get the first down. Trevor's not able to get it out. You know, that's what these third and tens do. You know, third and tens force you to have to take a deep drop, hold the ball, allow the routes to, to open up, and, and that just gives the chance for the pass rush to get on you. Those have missed all five third downs. Blake Gilligan with the kick, a 43-yarder. And the rookie Marquez Stevenson making his debut with no return. Buffalo will take over at the 25-yard line. So we're talking about the Bills Mafia. This is the boss of the Bills Mafia. If you'll play along with us, Josh Allen. Winning streak when he's thrown and run what 19 games. Second longest closing in on Terry Bradshaw. And after the early start, man, has he picked up with the impressive 300 yard games in this stretch time for the third most in the NFL. And the Bills Mafia's had reason to go back in Orchard Park after the game and celebrate. When Allen puts up big numbers, they usually put up wins 11 and 1. And that five quarterback first round in the 2018 draft, he was the third one taken. With Baker Mayfield taken at the top of that draft class. And then the Jets took Sam Darnold. And Buffalo at number seven has Allen. And they've got their franchise guy. Hold. This will come back. Deep shot for Diggs is incomplete. As Allen was breaking free, half the dome tried to throw the flag for Brad Allen's crew. Holding. Offense, number 73. Take on penalty. First down. Yeah, 73 right here on Granderson. Granderson, great inside move there. Able to get the holding call. I'm more impressed with the throw, Mike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it was a laser beam on the run here, but listen, that's 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 just as good as a sack. Well, Dawkins help him out a little bit because. Granderson already had one shot at his old college teammate from Wyoming. It's his first and 20, and it's Singletary. It eludes one tackle, but not the next one. But still keeps those legs going to gain three yards out of a play that could have lost yardage. We talk about this bend, don't break philosophy from the Saints defense right now. You know, that first drive, they allowed him to get uh, to go down there. Really missed a tackle is what allowed him to score the touchdown. They held him to a field goal on the second drive. But you kind of wait for moments like this. You wait for moments where, hey, you get a holding call or there's a negative play. And all of a sudden, you're able to force him into a third and long situation where you're able to get off the field. Here we are, second and long, but certainly they're in a good position right now. I've seen 71 in the huddle. Ryan Bates for Buffalo. He's moved into the right guard spot. On this second and long, Allen throws underneath good on top to Cole Beasley. Still one of the top slot receivers in the league. Out to the 30, it'll be third and six. Yeah, this is something Cole Beasley does so well. Basically just an option route. He can break out, he can break in. Nice job, too, settling. You feel how he just kind of settled there. He felt Demario Davis, who was mugged up, acting like he was going to pressure. He pops out. He doesn't want to run into trouble, as we would say. So he just settles it out, real friendly for the quarterback. Josh Allen's able to put it on his chest and put him in a third manageable situation now. And the Cowboys gain of 12 says a third and six. Allen out quick. Used Beasley a little bit of a pick. And Emmanuel Sanders, the former New Orleans Saint, gets the first down right at the marker of the 36-yard line. You watch here. P.J. Williams 
pressures, he's the free rusher, but they only have two DBs over there to cover three receivers. Josh Allen, nice job recognizing it, getting the ball into Sanders' hands so he can go get the first down. I mentioned Ryan Bates came in the game for Buffalo. Bates is shaken up on that last play, so he's coming out now. So a couple of injuries here for the Bills in the last two drives. And Jameel Douglas has come in, so Cody Ford left in that last drive. And After discussion, the ball would place it in the 36 and a half yard line. First down. It looked like they were giving the first down right at the 36. Let's uh, see the, the initial spot. And looking right down from the sticks, it's a hand down, so all legal. And he comes down almost closer to the 37. So whether it was discussion on the field or a little bit of help from up above. That's one of my favorite terms from NFL officials this year, though, Mike, is after further discussion. <laughs> exactly. It certainly seems to just clean things up and get it going faster, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. In New York, the replay officials are helping out to tidy up some of those. Rita with the run for about four yards. I, I was joking with all you guys in our football night studio. After further discussion, <laughs> would have been a great term to use around the Thanksgiving table if the discussions got a little dicey and you didn't want to. <laughs> you said something you want to take back. Right. You, you, you know, fam, after further discussion, I right. now think this. <laughs> right. And pass the gravy. <laughs> three and a half left. Buffalo six and four. They've lost two of their last three. Offense did not look good against Jacksonville, only scoring six points a couple of weeks ago and 15 against the Colts in Orchard Park on Sunday. Allen with time, throws in the middle, throws an interception. Bradley Roby comes up with the pick. Turnovers have been a problem for Allen and the Bills in the last three games. Roby, the former first round pick, grabs one for the Saints. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade today. Pride of New Orleans was there with uh, Savannah Guthrie and Hoda Kotb and Harry Connick, no hair. Playing the role for Annie. Look forward to seeing that a week from tonight here on NBC. After the turnover, Saints take over at their own 49. Tony Jones Jr., loss of a yard. Another play for Ed Oliver. Let's go back to the Allen interception. Yeah, so watch Stefan Diggs here on Roby. As he gets to the top of this route, it's man to man, and he's just running a hook route. But when the DB's on his back, he has the opportunity to slide in or out. Josh Allen thought he was going to slide in, he ended up sliding out, throws it right to Roby. That's just one of those unfortunate situations where you're just not on the same page with the receiver. And now in seventh turnover in the last four games. Simeon, nothing open, and he will go down as Oliver's had three good plays in a row. And Oliver, a big impact on that front for Buffalo here in this first half. Yeah, here's Oliver right here. It's a down the field concept, drop back, taking a while to develop. You know, one of, one of, those, one of those things as a quarterback, try to step up if you can, you're getting beat on the edge as well. But worst case scenario, maybe just try to find a way to throw that ball away so you don't get stuck with a third and long. We'll come up after the two minute warning. Two minutes left here. Saints starting this drive with good field position, but they're going backwards. El Tafoya back in New Orleans where moments ago, Tredavious White, the cornerback for the Bills was injured on this play and you will see his left knee sort of buckle there and that was the knee the athletic trainers were attending to he is now doubtful you can see the emotion on his face as he's leaving this game such a big part of this defense as you said Mike went to Ellis you grew up in Shreveport this was the first time he ever played at the Superdome so emotional to leave oh so it's awful third and 18 thanks for showing the pass it's complete to the fullback Adam Prentice, who's across midfield. He'll tackle him at the 49. He's still eight yards shy of the first down. And Buffalo is going to try to get the ball back in their hands, taking a timeout here with a minute and 51 to go before halftime. Let's take a look at the Walmart Plus 4K Skycam. We're going to zoom in on Tremaine Edmonds. 
Yeah, this guy is such a different uh, difference maker, impact player. Fights through blocks in the run game. He's sideline to sideline in the pass game, getting receivers and running backs down. Great zone awareness here, rallying up to make the tackle. And great as a blitzer as well at 6'5", 250 pounds. As good an athlete as he is, sideline to sideline, so physical, and has really become the leader of this defense. Very assertive. These guys really respond to him. Boy, did they miss him last week. So important, as all the Buffalo folks told us, to have him back in the lineup this week. Fourth and eight. Blake Gillikin, they bring pressure. And they're going to throw it, and it's incomplete. They're trying to throw it to little Jordan Humphrey on the sideline, but the coverage from Saran Neal, who is the gunner but is also a DB, was very good. And the Bills have timeouts, and they've got great field position as well. Right around midfield. Trying to find ways to generate plays. Gillikin's throw too high. What's up, buddy? In order to honor my grandmother, people were like, let's donate $17 to Oshai Children's Hospital. And it just, it blew up. And I mean, that's just gonna change so many lives for the better. Future on Josh Allen, you don't want to miss it. Coming up at halftime, they take over with good field position, throw it to Cole Beasley, a half yard shy of the first down. Second down coming up, Bills have a couple of timeouts left after that fake punt. And the Bills get the ball to start the second half. Gillikin, the punter, was looking for pass interference. You don't get pass interference. The gunner's allowed to be in contact with that receiver. So Gillikin's complaints were uh, incorrect. First down run to the 40-yard line for Singletary. So Buffalo in great shape here, Drew. Minute 10, two timeouts, 10-point lead. Yeah, plenty of time. They, they got great field position, so they don't have to go as far in this two-minute drive. Coming up on a minute, you got two timeouts, first down. Just keep chipping away at it. You don't have to take a shot here. Just keep chipping away. From the 40, Allen Singletary out of the backfield. We'll get out of bounds in a game of five yards. You like what you see from Allen so far tonight? Very much so. You know, th this was the Bills offense that I think we expected to see coming in here today, which was more of an, of an emphasis and a commitment to the run and the short to intermediate passing game. I, I don't think many of his throws have been deeper than 10 yards, except for the laser that he attempted to throw to <laughs> Stephon Diggs on the holding call. But otherwise, everything has just been very high efficiency, and, and they've moved the chains, been in third manageable situations. Singletary, the running backs at the top of the screen. Allen will pump, elude one tackle, get out of bounds with just a gain of a yard. A lot of more plays, two-hand touch with him over there. It'll be third down coming up, 49 seconds remaining. Yeah, I think defensive players have a tough time when quarterbacks get close to the sideline. You know, it's always right. one of those like, well, if I take if I take my shot here, I'm probably going to get a flag. So just try to push them out of bounds. Third down, you're looking at matchups. Well, Stephon Diggs right here with Marshawn Lattimore. But up top, you got better matchups. And Allen goes that way. Sanders trying to keep his knees in bounds, and he did. Ruled a catch and a running clock. First down at the 16-yard line. Yeah, so we pointed out, nice shot by Emmanuel Sanders. Such great feel on those these deep balls down the field to track him. Catch him. Allen flushed here, gets rid of it, and it is incomplete. And Singletary, I believe, was close enough for no intentional grounding, but there was a flag down as the Saints were running around on the defensive side. Allen thinks he had him for offside. Offside. Defense number 94. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Number 26 was in the area. There is no intentional grounding. Cameron Jordan. The All-Pro called for the flag. And Allen communicating with the sideline. There's Jordan. Yeah. Always looking for an edge. Those, those wily defensive ends. Cam Jordan has been one of the best in the league for a long time. A mainstay here in New Orleans since 2011. One of the great leaders on that defense. He's as good against the run as he is against the pass. And these are the situations he thrives on. 27 seconds. Bills have two timeouts. So lots of options for Buffalo. And Allen. 
underneath Sanders. Just shy of the first down, Sean McDermott running down to get the timeout. Second down coming up in 30 seconds. Knowing they're a little shorthanded offensively, Sean Payton and the Saints have gone for it twice on fourth down, giving the Bills good field position because they didn't convert. One, they turned into a field goal. Buffalo trying to turn this one into a touchdown, knowing they get the ball to start the second half. The timeout left, second and one. And Allen. Running around, Knox gets free for the touchdown, but there is a flag down. Play design had a lot going on, and we were on part B of that play, <laughs> the extended part of that play, and may have forced him uh, some linemen too far. Let's hear the call. And eligible downfield, number 65, offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Well, Ike Butker, the guard. Yeah, you can see Josh Allen drops back and looks to his left like he's throwing a screen. Watch all the linemen as well. They're Olay and their guys. They're trying to get out in front, down the field to block for the screen. <laughs> Everybody runs to the right. Josh Allen scrambles, but unfortunately, he's already got linemen downfield. Good call. It's now 16 seconds, one timeout, second down. You can still get a first down, but clock is the more important thing here. Yeah, what you really want to do is try to get to around the five-yard line with a pass and then call a timeout and take a couple shots at the end zone. Allen. Intercepted Quan Alexander. The pressure got to Allen, and he is intercepted again. Back-to-back -back picks for this New Orleans defense. Yeah, I really don't know what Josh Allen is looking at. He's looking to the left, but he's got right there, Emmanuel Sanders. He's your outlet. Throw him the ball. Let him catch you. Get tackled to the five-yard line. Call a timeout, and you're going to have two shots at the end zone. Instead, you hold it, you hold it, you get your arm hit, and you miss out on getting points for the half. Nice job, though, by the Saints. Pass rush, relentless. Cam Jordan. Cam Jordan making another play. And a great grab by Quan Alexander here as he comes up with the interception, held it up high. And Josh Allen never makes mistakes in the red zone in terms of picks. His first interception in the red zone comes here at the end of the half and keeps New Orleans in the game. Odd end to this first half. Bills will get the ball to start the second half. The Toyota Halftime is coming up from New Orleans and a feature on Josh Allen. But first, these messages from your local NBC station. Welcome to the Toyota Halftime. Let's go places. 10-0 Buffalo on this Thanksgiving night here in New Orleans. Josh Allen has thrown a couple of interceptions, but has also thrown a touchdown for the Bills in the first half. Josh Allen was born in Central California. He went to college at Wyoming, but since being drafted by the Bills, he has really found a wonderful home in western New York. Our Maria Taylor went to upstate New York to visit to find out why the connection with the quarterback and the Bills' rabid fans. Now when you hear the word Bills Mafia, now that you've been here, what's the first word that comes to mind? Family. Yeah. Bills Mafia, they're, they are unbelievable. This place reminds me so much of my home and how I was raised, and I feel like I would be part of Bills Mafia if I wasn't one of the football players. Josh Allen, touchdown Buffalo! And already he has this town. It is going to be a major love affair. He's our guy now. For Josh Allen, football isn't the only reason his love for Buffalo feels like a family affair. 
There's also his connection with Oshai Children's Hospital. There he is. A place that recalls up, his own family history. I'm Josh. My brother had a rare disease when he was little, uh, Kawasaki disease, and he was in the hospital for about a week. And I, I remember how I felt seeing my brother go through that, seeing my parents go through that. You got to do me a favor. Mm -hmm. You got to help me put it on. You got stretched out. All right, ready? <laughs> there we go. I love it. It's the smallest thing you can do is just go say hi to somebody and just put a big smile on their face. Nice to meet you. Joe's told me all about you. Let them know that the person that they're looking up to is also looking out for them. Sweet, I can't believe you came. Jack, you want to get in a picture? You want to get in? A quarter? Okay, say go Bills. Go Bills. My name is Jackson Marquetta, and I am nine years old. There aren't many bigger Josh Allen fans, or O'Shy fans for that matter, than the Marquetta family. When Jack was two, doctors at O'Shy diagnosed him with a rare autoimmune disease. It was an early catch, and years of weekly treatment have helped him avoid any major complications. We're so grateful to Oshai because my boy is a perfectly healthy boy, living a great life, and um, that is because of that doctor that saw the signs early. During his treatment at Oshai, Jack has gotten to spend some time with his favorite Bills player. We were doing a um, fake throw with the left arm, mm -hmm. and you handed it to Singletary, yeah. and he ran in for the touchdown. The old Statue of Liberty play. Yeah. <laughs> told you that yeah. Like these experiences that I get to have with these kids, they can make a lasting impact on them, and you know that's uh, it's a really cool part about it. Four quarter dog fight, man. I like us. Play for each other. Love you guys. Win on three. One, two, three. Win. Last November. The Buffalo community left its own impact on Allen after Josh's grandmother, Patricia Allen, passed away shortly before the Bills' Week 9 matchup against the Seattle Seahawks. Patricia Allen was the most loving, most generous grandmother. I remember being a kid after the game. She was uh, always one of the first persons we saw. I knew that she was watching that day, so the best way to honor her was go out there and play hard. Josh Allen runs to his right, gets inside the five, into the end zone, touchdown, Buffalo! I don't really do many celebrations, but I ran it in there, and I, I just had to point up and let her know, let my family know that she was on my mind and she was in that, in that stadium with us that day. The stands may have been empty that day, but the Buffalo faithful let their QB know they were there for him. I found out that uh, Josh's grandmother passed away the night before. I made a post that just said, let's donate $17 to Oshai Children's Hospital, which is his charity of choice. More than $75,000. $250,000. More than a million dollars. Before we knew it, it had just completely blown up. To date, more than 27,000 people have raised $1.4 million for the hospital, which now bears both a fund and a wing in Patricia Allen's name. I'm at a loss for words, and I know my family is, and we can't thank you guys enough for allowing us to be a part of this special hospital. It's kind of, it's, it's hard to describe it, um, to know that she's gonna have an everlasting impact here in Buffalo. To me and my family, that, that means the world. He's cool, he's kind, he's done a lot for the hospital, and um, I'm grateful for it because what, people do for the hospital can help kids like me and help them feel better. This community is now part of me and my family and we're gonna be indebted here and intertwined here in Buffalo for the rest of my life. What a powerful and special connection. Alan, the six-year contract with the Bills this offseason, so those roots and that impact on the community only figures to grow. What a great story. We back in a moment, but first, Toyota reminds you that confidence looks great on you in a stylish Toyota car. Halftime here at the Caesars Superdome, 10 nothing, Buffalo leading New Orleans. A moment ago, our colleague Drew Brees down to the field. Of course, he, his final game was with an empty stadium, so he had the chance to say farewell as the Saints honored him. His wife, Brittany, and the kids, Rylan and Balin and Bowen, and Callen all there along with the fans. Drew got the New Orleans fans going one last time with the Houdat chants that he helped create during that magical Super Bowl season. Great honor for Drew at the half. He'll be up here for the second half when we come back after this.
This has been the Toyota Halftime. Let's go places. The Winter Olympics begin. Fights are brought to you by Chevrolet. Well, Nothing like the noise in the dome. Allen swings it underneath, taken in, and to the goal line and in for Dawson Knox. And a Buffalo touchdown. Pressure from Branderson, and he goes down. Bass pure on that one. Allen throws an interception. Allen intercepted Quad Alexander. Chevrolet, find new roads. And that recaps the first half as we are set for the third quarter here in New Orleans. Buffalo leading 10 to nothing, and they will get the ball as we begin this second half. The Bills 6-4, and four, the Saints 5-5. Five and five. New Orleans has lost three in a row and searching for anything on offense. And they've tried to go for it on fourth down a couple of times unsuccessfully. Brett Maher, the former Cowboy, will kick it off. Marquez Stevenson lets it go. It's a touchback, and here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, Sean McDermott was frustrated by Josh Allen's back-to-back -back interceptions, telling me that can't happen. We've got to be more efficient and better in the red zone. As for the emotional loss of Tredavious White, who has been downgraded to out, McDermott said, we've got to rise to the occasion and replace him in the second half. Now, Sean Payton told me his team has to be more efficient, run the ball better, said they won't try to go up tempo. They just want to get plays off the ground. He said, we can't be any worse than what we just saw, but he is happy with his defense, Mike. 64 yards, Michelle, from New Orleans in that first half here. Singletary, and the pleasure with the defense continues. Juan Alexander, Demario Davis, over to shut down that run by Buffalo. And Bills with a good field position on that last one, and the red zone interception, which Josh Allen has never had before in his career. Yeah, the Bill, Bills, are, Bills are speeding up their tempo right now. You know, really, they had a great first half game plan. It was really just the two two interceptions, stopping drives. The 24 Singletary inside. We'll get it to about the 28 yard line. I'll set up third down. Good job sprinting back up here to the booth. <laughs> the, we completed the fire drill. <laughs> it was a great first half, uh, or halftime, I should say. Honor so these fans could say thank you. Properly since it was an empty stadium last year. Yeah, it was so great to be in front of the fans again. Who that nation, some of the greatest fans in the world. It's like the folks watching up in Western New York, and many of them have traveled here to New Orleans to support the road team. Third and seven. Saints bring five. Allen's looking for a, a way out, and he's gonna do it with his legs. Knocked down, but a first down at the 38-yard line for Josh Allen. Yeah, really nice job by the Saints defense here. Man-to-man -man coverage, doing a nice job. Nobody's open. Josh Allen, this is this is what makes him so dangerous, especially on third down, especially in man coverage when all of these DBs have their back to the quarterback because they're covering receivers. If he's able to find a lane, take off and run, you see him convert so many third downs to extend drives that way. He'll pull it and throw it, juggled but caught by Beasley at the 45-yard line right in front of Marcus Williams. So we've seen Allen run a few times. He has five runs today for 30 yards at 29% of the team's rushing yards. That's fourth among quarterbacks in the league. And in terms of the percentage of carries, takes about one of every four times. Yeah, you know, and there's some good things about that, and there's some bad things about that. Uh, you, you know, with some of these scrambles on third down, hey, that's great. Some of the design QB runs uh, on maybe fourth and short, that's great. But they need to do a better job of, of spreading that responsibility to some of these other backs and getting more out of that. He's going to pull it here and keep it, take a big lick and gain a yard. We asked about all the big hits he takes on some of these runs, and he said, look, I'm not going to be able to do this forever, but right now my body feels fantastic, <laughs> which is a description I haven't heard from an NFL player on a Thanksgiving weekend. Well, when you're 6'5", 237 pounds, you're dishing out as much of the brunt as, as you're getting it. Um, so, yeah, while he's young and, and, and while you can bounce back in 24 hours and, and feel great, have at it. But you don't want him taking too many of those kind of hits. No. Or the one he took on the first down. Scramble. Bradley Roby got him low. Third and two. 
first. He's covered, but he comes back to Beasley and gets the first down at the 40-yard line. So dependable on third down. For almost a decade now, Beasley takes it to Saints territory. And this was a nice, nice play design. They make it look like they're throwing this screen to Diggs, and these receivers are going to block. Watch him stalk, stalk, and then Beasley gets by Malcolm Jenkins. Nice execution of that play. Four for Beasley tonight, 61 on the season. Singletary, good run, Devin. Singletary inside, got out of a tackle and gets a first down. And a gain of 10. And Drew, you talked about Buffalo. More runs given to running backs. That's the 15th tonight. Yeah, it is. And you know, this is where this is where having the threat of Josh Allen keeping it and getting around the edge just holds Malcolm Jenkins just long enough to give Singletary a little bit of momentum downhill, able to hit the crease, turn that into a nice game. Bills with the yardage, the time possession, controlling all the stats. Leading by 10, opening drive here, the third. Four man rush gets through, is a screen, but he has to just throw it at the feet of Singletary. No foul, number 26 is in the air. Boy, he had two offensive linemen out on one linebacker. If he could have found a way to get that ball into Singletary's hands, Singletary gets held up just a little bit because of Cam Jordan pushing the right tackle into his lap. But ah, on those screens, they tell the quarterback, just find a way, find a throwing lane, gain depth away from the rush. Because you know your linemen are basically O-laying the D linemen so they can get out to block downfield. Second and 10. And Allen throws sideline. That's out of bounds. And a flag should be thrown here. Marshawn Lattimore was involved with Stephon Diggs. Diggs was on the way on the white on the sideline when the ball was thrown. And Lattimore wants to know about these two lock it on. Number 23. All the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. And drove him out of bounds. Hands on it for more than five yards, combined a lot of things there. So it takes the Bills to the 20. And Sean Payton's defense has stepped up a couple of times as the Bills have been on the move. They're going to need to here. Yeah, they have. You know, it's this bend or break philosophy. You know, and, and it's this, hey, we're going to let you run the ball for four yards. We're going to let you throw balls underneath. And you know what? We're going to get a sack or a holding call or, or get a pick. And that's what they've been able to do. Singletary to the left, cuts it up. Good hard run here by Singletary. Threw another tackle. Still on his feet. 16-yard powerful run by an inspired Devin Singletary. We saw Matt Breida get some of the early carries. And I think you're seeing Singletary say, don't forget about me, coach. Yeah, you think he's got a little motivation coming into this mm -hmm. week? You talk about Matt Breida. What about Singletary? Nice job on the offensive line. This is a wide zone stretch play. Get the defensive lineman running, and then when Singletary feels that lane, bam, put your foot in the ground, get the ball upfield. <laughs> you think McDermott loves that? Heck yeah. That just compliments his defense. First and goal. Bunch of three receivers to the right. Allen's just going to read it and let Singletary slam it inside. Only a yard there. Jalen Holmes, fourth year man out of Ohio State, leading the Saints defense. Yeah, this is. These. These plays inside the 10 yard line, Saints defense versus Bills offense, will determine this game. Diggs and Lattimore go up to the top of your screen. Beasley in motion. Allen looking at Diggs, going to Diggs. Diggs got it. Buffalo touchdown, Stefan Diggs. Really good on really good. And Diggs wins that one. Really nice route by Diggs. You know, his transition skills are so good. Makes it look like it's just a little bah, slant. Nope, foot in the ground. You see a lot of time, a lot of teams attempt to do that. Some better than others, but none better than Diggs. Against one of the better DBs in the league. Really nice execution. 
Tyler Bass for the extra point. What a drive to start the second half for Buffalo. 11 plays and 75 yards. And that combination that was so good last year at it again this year. Allen to Diggs. Buffalo up 17. The gourmet butcher block Cajun meat market established in 1994. That's the home of the Traducan. You know, John Madden forever part of Thanksgiving for so many of us. The football games with uh, the great Pat Summerall talking about the Traducan, the turkey, and the duck, and the chicken all together. Well, that's where it started. Gourmet butcher block. Part of the Thanksgiving football tradition. That many will enjoy. Deontay Harris hit by Kumaro, stays on his feet, but won't get to the 50. Coverage has been outstanding by Buffalo tonight. Take a look at our next gen stats powered by AWS. Yeah, you know, one of the things you'll see here is just how deep Trevor Simeon will drop back in the pocket at times. You know, this, this makes it really hard on the offensive tackles. You know, if you're driven, drop back deep, step up into that pocket somewhere, certainly less than 10 yards. That allows the tackle to really kind of set up and know exactly what his parameters are when it comes to that defensive end and where he can take him. So far in this game, there's just been too many of these times where and you're trying to push the ball down the field. Unfortunately, pass rush is getting you on the edges. and You're not able to deliver the ball down the field. The Saints need to get back to just this steady run game, finding some completions underneath. And once you have a chance to do that and get a drive going, you wear the defense down a little bit. You get them thinking about the run and the short pass game. That's when you hit them with the play action for some of these down the field opportunities. Because as we know, we're, they're going to need to make some, some plays down the field. You know, they're down 17 points. You're not panicking yet, but at the same time, there is a sense of urgency. We saw the numbers just the 64 yards. It's a two decade plus low in the dome. Shut out in the first half at home, back to back games. Simeon sideline shot here. Marquez Callaway couldn't pull it in. So they are going after Dane Jackson, who's in because of Tredavious White. There's a holding penalty coming up here on Buffalo. It's going to give the Saints a first down. It was away from where the ball was thrown. Ball thrown to the sideline. The flag was back in the middle of the defense. There's no foul for defensive right. holding. And the flag was thrown. Now picked up. So no hold. Third down coming up. Here's the route. So it's just a pure go route by Marquez Callaway. The, the corner bails. So it looks like looks like Marquez was looking that hey maybe it's going to be a back shoulder. Gets the DB to settle his feet. Just miss it over the top. But, you know, honestly, if the Bills are going to want to play down safety defense, in other words, safety in the box, eight-man front, try to try to stop the run, these, you know, with Tredavious White out of the game, take advantage of the matchups outside on these, these corners. Simeon goes quick, tries to take off. He's tripped up by Ed Oliver, will only gain a yard. Oliver's been outstanding tonight, and the Saints offense has not. And the fans restless. Just four first downs for New Orleans, 67 yards. And not a lot of answers with the personnel to match the play call sheet for Sean Payton. So Blake Gilligan will come on to kick again with Marquez Stevenson awaiting. Drive 47 yards. Stevenson muffs it in his first game in the league. He got it back and gets the 47. He's only in the line because Isaiah McKenzie had a kickoff problem last week. Stevenson lost that one. Mm, looks good. Back in New Orleans, Mike Tirico, Drew Brees, Michelle Tafoy on the sideline, Terry McCauley with us here in the dome as well. Bills up 17 nothing and Allen to the air and complete Gabriel Davis inside the 35 and pushed out of bounds at the 32. Michelle good throw from Allen there. Yeah compare Josh Allen in college at Wyoming to Josh Allen now when we show you these photos notice how many body parts are moving and how much different he is putting into his throws in college. He has worked with quarterback coach Jordan Palmer to remove unnecessary motion and get more efficient. Palmer told me over the past four years they focused on Allen's mechanics from his feet to controlling the speed of his throws and those are constantly evolving as they probably should Drew Brees. 
That's exactly right. Those, all those arrows are vectors. We'll talk about vectors here in just a second. The Singletary gets stopped back behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of four there. All right, explain, please. Yeah, so vectors are like your arm, your head, all the things that have weight that when you're gener when, when they're moving, they also have force and energy. Mm -hmm. So if all those things are going to the target, you've got all your force and energy going to the target and be more accurate with more velocity. Right. You saw those older shots where his head is flying to the left, his offhand is outside the right. framework of his body. He's not going to be as accurate, not as much velocity. He's made great improvements on that. You've told us a lot this year that eye level, steady head leads to accuracy for quarterbacks. Something to watch as you assess young ones. That's we exactly right. See the growth with Allen there. Second and 15, he's taken off. He used the pump to get a few extra yards. Malcolm Jenkins, the veteran, seen all that before. Pulls him out of bounds. Third down coming up. Go, so go back to the pictures and explain on these here, man. Well, that's right. You know, look, look at how look at how his 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 head is tilted right there. Right. And his eyes are actually moving as he's throwing the ball. So if your head's moving as you're throwing the ball, the target's going to look like it's moving too. You're not going to be as accurate. But if your eyes are still, we always say eyes still, back foot on the ground, shoulder within the framework of your body, straight to the target. All your force and energy going there. You're going to be much more accurate and much more happy with the result. There are Saints fans down here yelling, "True, can you come down here and do that?" <laughs> Allen's throw is complete to Beasley. He's going to be short of the first down. I think they thought I was going to throw him a pass for a <laughs> yeah, second. <they> did. <laughs> I think they want to see you do it on the field right now. <laughs> with the Got fourth, a helmet? Fourth down here. Let's see what Buffalo's going to do up 17. McDermott keeping the offense out here to go for it. Yeah, I like the aggressiveness from Sean McDermott. He must have a play he likes. Here's the thing, having a running quarterback, yeah. it gives you just so many advantages in short yardage situations. He's under center here, so we'll see. Fourth and two. On the boot, Jenkins is waiting with the pass. is caught by Dawson Knox, who has his second Thanksgiving night touchdown. The threat of the run. Knox for 24 yards on the back end of it. And the Bills dominating here on the road. Yeah, watch Dawson Knox here coming over in motion. Looks like it's going to be a run. Fakes blocking down. Marshawn Lattimore just slips and falls. Like the play call. Easy touchdown for the Bills. Touchdown seven on the season for Knox, who went to college at Ole Miss. It's tied with Hunter Henry. For the most tight end touchdowns in the NFL this year. And you hear some cheers. The Buffalo fans who made the trip have made it worthwhile. School. Mighty Mississippi. Mighty big hole for the home team. 24 to nothing Buffalo. Josh Allen has thrown three touchdowns. No return. Touchback. And Buffalo will take over at the 25-yard line. Down to Michelle. Well, Mike, this season, Bills tight end Dawson Knox launched an initiative called Knox Socks, which provides support to local families facing pediatric cancer through the Punt Pediatric Cancer Collaborative. Knox pledged $1,000 for every touchdown and $100 for every catch this season. And fans can get involved, too, by purchasing custom-made Bill's socks, which will be used by local pediatric cancer patients. Very cool. Very cool idea by Dawson. Certainly reaching out in the community as well. Simeon on first down has this pass well, out of his hands. No whistle blown for a fumble or inter incomplete. It's picked up by the Bills and on the run, with it is Micah Hyde to the end zone. Ruled on the field. Nothing for the moment. Now we'll have deeper discussion. Ruling on the field is an incomplete forward pass. Second down. All right. Yep. Control coming forward. So it's incomplete. And we'll bring up second down. Simeon just seven of 14 passing. Yep. 24 to nothing now 
Four minutes left in the third quarter. This is it's when you really have to start cranking up the tempo, finding ways to get the ball down the field, and just, just get drives going here. Get some first downs. Try to wear down this defensive line a little bit so it's not just pinning the ears back and teeing off on you in the pass rush. But the minute that Tredavious White went out of this game, I felt like the strategy should have changed a bit for the Saints offense. You've got these two young corners, Levi Wallace and Dane Jackson, who came in to replace Tredavious White. You got to feel good about your matchups if they're going to play down safety defense. So single high with man to man outside. The unfortunate thing is it's 24 to nothing now. You're probably going to get more shell defense, two safety defense. Ty Montgomery, the carry, and Tremaine Edmonds throws him down. A gain of less than a yard. So it's third and long for a New Orleans team that has not converted a third down here on the night. So odd to see because all we've seen for the last 16 years is the success of this offense and first downs were no brainers and there was tempo and there was completions and high completion percentage and Simeon making his fourth start after the injury to Jameis Winston can't find it right now and as he throws and he found it there Marquez Callaway on the sidelines a first down there's a flag down back by the quarterback who got hit up by the helmet let's see if this is tacked on personal foul roughing the passer defense number 91 15 yards at the end of the run automatic first down and Oliver who's had a big night with a big penalty Yeah, these are the matchups that we're talking about here. Dane Jackson, no Tredavious White. That's a matchup they got to keep going back to. Good opportunity here now. You've crossed the 50. It's going to be a bit more up-tempo. You don't have to push the ball down the field and, and risk taking sacks and negative plays. It's just finding completions. Deep drop again for Simeon. Now really deep. And just gets rid of it. Had to get out of the tackle box so he could throw it away. Jerry Hughes with the pressure on the quarterback. With Oliver there too again. Yeah, you'll see Jerry Hughes here on the right side. Working against James Hurst. With Ryan Ramchek out. Just overpowers him inside. Forces Trevor Simeon out of the pocket. You know, he had, he had routes working down the field against man-to-man. -man. Unfortunately, just couldn't hold on to it long enough. I know it's Thanksgiving. It's, it's like Christmas. We get a 24-0 lead. You have a backup right tackle. And Jerry Hughes, a chance to... Yeah, that's why you got to get the ball out of your hands quick. He does there. But Deontay Harris makes a man miss, and Harris gets close to a first down. Jermaine Edmonds traced him down. We marked a yard shy of third down coming up. Yeah, you want to find a way to get back in this game, just get it. Get your playmaker's hands in space. Certainly, Devonte Harris is one of these guys. He's electric. This is basically a punt return. He's picking up his blockers just as he was. And he just caught a punt. That's the guy's hands you want to have it in. And you say Harris, and you say playmaker. That might be the best offensive weapon the Saints have right now, which just reinforces how many injuries this team has uh, dealt with. It's a long one. Former Notre Dame running back Tony Jones Jr. Able to get it inside the 30-yard line to the 29. I see Jackson make the tackle. Just thinking about Tredavious White and that knee injury and White being out you know, for the rest of the game. And we'll wait a day or so to find out what his status is. But that's such a huge loss if it is a long-term loss for Buffalo. All-pro corner Leslie Frazier, defensive coordinator for the Bills, has had a real steady diet of White with the two safeties. Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer always in the lineup. Jones is stopped back behind the line of scrimmage. Taron Johnson, the nickel corner, makes the tackle. Yep, you see Taron Johnson here, nickel pressure. You know, one of the best players on the field for them. The reason they play nickel defense so much is because he is such a versatile player, great in, in, in pass coverage. Really good tackler and someone they really like to bring a lot in pressure off the slot. Nickel five DBs, they play that more than anybody in the league. 
Second and 15 for number 15. Simeon in the middle of the field with the completion. One more time, a little Jordan Humphrey. And a New Orleans first down right around the 10-yard line. All right. I'll show you one of my favorite plays. All go special. You got four <laughs> verticals from a three-by-one set. Nice job by Trevor Simeon standing in there. That's his first read, little Jordan Humphreys. Taking the, taking the seam route across the field in single high. A lot of time on task with that route on the, with this team. And movement on the right side. False start. Offense, number 84. Five-yard penalty. Go first down. Just talk us through the job of the New Orleans Saints quarterback, what you have to do on a play as a play call, because he has long plays, doesn't he? He's got, he's got, there's some, there's some very long plays. There's a lot of verbiage at times. Give me one. It, it could be green left twins, E short tight pass, 37 buster nudge, Y flutie sting, X spear kill, 53 tight and left. You know, on, on, on whatever the, you know, dummy cadence says, hey, we're going to get up here on the Sesson man zone. I got to communicate. Oh, you're not lined up right. Got to get you lined up. Oh, the clock's ticking down. There's a lot to think about. <laughs> quarterback. I need that Thanksgiving night nap. I'm exhausted just from that. <laughs> Tony Jones to carry for about three, and that'll get us to the end of the third. Buffalo scored all 14 in that frame. Bills 24, Saints nothing after three. And NBC Sunday Night Football on Thanksgiving night continues from New Orleans after these messages. By Geico. Fourth quarter. Here in the Caesars Superdome, Mike Tirico, Drew Brees, Michelle Tafoya, sending our Thanksgiving wishes to our friends Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth, and everybody back home enjoying the holiday. 24-0 Buffalo, best drive of the night for the Saints, and Simeon scrambling, throwing end zone, touchdown. Nick Van Nett gets the Saints on the board. And they'll go for two to try to make it a two possession game. And this is a really nice job by Trevor Simeon. They explode to this empty formation. First progression is an open, feels the pressure, scrambles. Nice job finding the open tight end in the back of the end zone. I like the little subtle eyes staring at the flat, you know, get the defender to, to bite up on that, give him an opportunity. Throw the touchdown. Saints have struggled mightily going for a two. They've missed their last nine. Ten. Remarkable run for such a great play designer, too. Vanette's first touchdown catch of the year. It's an 18 point Buffalo lead. The division games ahead from the same draft class Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson. Browns in Baltimore. Football Line in America gets you started 7 Eastern time. Be sure to make your Sunday Night 7 picks on the free-to-play NBC Sports Predictor app. New $1 million jackpot contest. All a part of Sunday Night. Lamar Jackson back and ready to roll. This last week with an illness said he feels 120%. He's ready to go. So they missed the two-point conversion. We said they've missed now 10 in a row. Let's go back to Sean Payton after that play, Drew. Yeah, well, you can sense the frustration. He's saying, hey, receiver, when you're not open to the corner, you have to retrace back inside. That, that's part of some of the nuances to this offense that a lot of these young receivers just don't know yet. And you know what? It's really the spaghetti sauce. It's the secret sauce. It's what really helps this offense go to another level when you have all these little nuances and adjustments that a veteran receiver like a Michael Thomas would know or a quarterback who's been in the system for a while and that's just what's missing in this offense right now Allen first down to Stephon Diggs trying to get out of that tackle Diggs will go down a gain of five as Bradley Roby was hanging on to the Bills top receiver and the Bills are getting that now with Diggs mentioned Beasley who's been here for a while and that Emmanuel Sanders a former teammate of yours who has three catches tonight but his addition, a guy who's played with some of the biggest quarterback names, really helps this Buffalo offense add another piece. I, I think it was one of their better better uh, decisions in the offseason to go out and get a guy like that. First off, he's played a lot of years in this league. You know, he's, uh, he's a veteran guy, played with a lot of great quarterbacks and some great systems. 
and has been a great influence on that receiver room, but also as a deep threat in this offense. You know, so much attention goes to Stephon Diggs and to Cole Beasley in the slot. So that really leaves, that really leaves Emmanuel Sanders matched up in many cases on, mm -hmm. you know, the third corner or sometimes the fourth corner on a defense. So, you know, his, his, uh, his yards down the field opportunities to catch deeper balls and, and targets have, have gone way up this year as a result of all those things. And, and he certainly maximized the opportunity and brought a different element to this offense. Averaging 16 yards a catch. Singletary took the last one for a first down. Allen's all alone here, run out of bounds, get pushed out of bounds by Alexander. Michelle? Yeah, speaking of Emmanuel Sanders, the Emmanuel Sanders Foundation was created in 2017 to provide children from financially disadvantaged families with resources to reach their full potential. In September, Sanders relaunched the foundation in Buffalo with a $20,000 donation and a visit to Harriet Ross Tubman Elementary School. Sanders said, I have to find a way to give back because so many people gave back to me and I love that Michelle his roots in Buffalo are, are just being planted he's a veteran he's 12 years in the league he's been so many places Allen's gonna go to Diggs here and Stefan's gonna catch it the mark looks like it'll be shy of the first down it's very close but I mentioned Sanders remember he was drafted by Pittsburgh in the third round so he's played with Roethlisberger played with Manning Breeze guy I've heard of once I or twice last year yeah and Flacco so four Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. He's caught touchdowns from all of them. Jimmy Graham, who caught one today for Chicago in their win at Detroit, the other to do that. Yeah, he was he was one of my favorite guys last year. Really did a great job. Really did a great job for us. And shoot, he's he's got another opportunity this year. Third and inches, and Allen's gonna throw, and it's digs again. Incomplete. So they choose not to run it with very short to go. Wonder if they're thinking about fourth down, although they're leading by 18 with 12 minutes left, and they are. They and throw an incomplete. You knew you'd get this matchup a lot tonight, especially on third down. Diggs has gotten Marshawn a few times. Marshawn gets him this time. Nice job just playing the hands. You know, at times as a DB, you're not going to have a chance to see the ball, but you play the hands of the receiver. Get your, get your hand up through it, knocks it away. Nice job. Interesting spot if they go for here, and New Orleans takes the timeout. Ryan Bates, offensive lineman, oh, reported. Sean Payton important. wants to know why he didn't get a chance to match that change that came in. Timeout. <laughs> a lot of head scratching in that last time. Sean Payton wants to know why he didn't get a chance to match when somebody came in to report eligible, but that player came into the huddle. And then they measured for a play that they were lined up to run before the timeout. And Buffalo from their side of midfield up 18, maybe trying to just draw them off. And it didn't work. And now Buffalo will take a timeout. Charge timeout. Buffalo. 24 to 6 here. You know, you get to Thanksgiving, that means what? That means it's time to start thinking about what's going to happen in the last five weeks of the season. And when we talked to the Bills, they said, we are now wearing the crown. We're getting the attention. We're a circled game for teams. And they've got two big circle games because they have the Patriots who they're going to battle in the East coming up twice in the four weeks after this one. So this is a very important time for Sean McDermott's team to get things right. It is. They, they've definitely had the bullseye on their chest this year. And, and listen, they've they faced some adversity. You know, we, we talked to Coach Sean McDermott uh, yesterday about the expectations going into this year and the message that he sent to his team. And a lot of that was, hey, guys, it's going to be harder than it was last year. You don't just pick up where you left off. You got to earn it. We got the bullseye on our chest, and we are going to face adversity. And, and sure enough, they have here over the last three weeks. But they certainly came out tonight ready to play. Defense has been very stout. Offensively, it's exactly what we thought. Focus on the run game, really high efficiency passing game. Up 18, St. Paul at their own 12 on this Thanksgiving night. It's a tune that uh, you got very familiar with here in the Big Easy. Thankfully, that's not Breeze playing a saxophone. You don't want to hear that. 
But uh, the Saints were rolling for the 15, 16 years you all were together. Second most wins for a head coach and a quarterback. But with the other guys who've been here along the way, share the quarterback room with you. 13 and 9. Points down a bit. It's now Trevor Simeon and Taysom Hill after Jameis Winston was lost for the season. In the game against the Buccaneers four weeks ago. Simeon trying to throw the screen to Montgomery, but that was handled easily by Matt Milano. Michelle? Yeah, well, Taysom Hill signed a new contract this week, which he said was a relief, telling me it's nice to not have to worry about where I'll be the next few years. But he also said, I don't know that it creates a clear picture other than that I'll be here. Of course, I want to play quarterback. My aspirations and expectations have not changed. But my ability to do other things might hurt me in that regard. This year has been a lot of disappointment, if I'm being honest, but it has not affected the way I come to work or prepare. Yeah, Michelle, for the folks who weren't with us earlier, he is the emergency backup because of a foot injury. So that's why Hill isn't playing. And the contract was odd. It was four years, $40 million. Could be as much as $95 million. It never heard of a range of salary like that. But it depends on his position. If he plays quarterback and reaches some very specific marks statistically, and with how deep the Saints would go, Marquez Callaway the catch, he's not down shy of the first down. Well, then he would get more of that money. When have you ever seen a contract where it's like, well, if he plays quarterback, he'll make this. If he plays tight end or <laughs> H-back or slot receiver or, you know, kind of Swiss Army knife, he'll make this. Mm -hmm. you know, it, just, yeah. it just shows what a unique player he is. I mean, there's truly no one like him. Um, you know, as a teammate, the way that he approached coming to work, each and every day. I mean, have you ever seen a guy literally every time he touches the ball, he got a smile on his face? You know, I mean, he <laughs> loves the game. He loves football. And however he can help this team, he's going to do it. But certainly he feels like he can bring great value at the quarterback position, and I agree. Punt by Gilligan. Stevenson brings it back, and Marquez Stevenson has given them a little bit in the return game. Takes that to the 49 yard line. We'll talk more about Taysom Hill. The Saints get the ball back. Some oysters for your post Thanksgiving meal tomorrow. Some happy folks this Thanksgiving Terry and Kim Pagula, the owners of the Buffalo Bills, and their daughter Jess, who's a very talented tennis player, represented the U.S. in the Olympics, has been in the top 25 of the women's WTA rankings over the last couple of years. But Pagula family involved with the Bills and Sabres in ownership and watching Josh Allen lead this team to new heights. Completion of Stefan Diggs. They've been going to Diggs here in the second half to the 23. It's a gate of 28. Yeah, so Diggs gets matched up with the Debo this time. Hits him on a double move. They were going to take advantage of that matchup. Nice execution. Five incompletions for Allen. Seven of his 22 connections to that man digs. And the Bills offense one has been clicking and two has not played an opponent that's been one of the top teams in the league. They have put up some big numbers. Think of the Miami games, the Jet game, but they've also done it against good teams. A Singletary carries for a couple of yards. Earlier in the season, that Kansas City game, the 38 to 20 game. I know they lost the Monday night game against Tennessee, but they scored 31 in that one. So Sean McDermott's team knows they can do it. And they saw that on the playoff stage last year, beating Baltimore at home and then losing to Kansas City. Question now is, can they find the way to get that momentum going here in the final third of the season? Yeah, I think they're one of the more complete teams in the NFL. Uh, the way that they played offense tonight with the high efficiency passing game, just kind of picking and choosing their shots. They really didn't push the ball down the field very much, though, really once or twice. Um, but they have to get rid of those turnovers. Yep. That, that's, that will really be an Achilles heel if that continues. Two more tonight. Rita. That was a good job by Paulson Adebo, but he may be shaking, him, shaking himself up on that play. Adebo was coming in fast and stays down. Paulson Adebo, the rookie of the third round pick out of Stanford. Went low to get Adebo, and Adebo's head got him in the helmet. Or Breeders, I should say. And Adebo still down. Buffalo on the move, up 18. Paulson Adebo being checked in the tent for injury. Ken Crawley just re-signed by the Saints in this past week. Checks into the lineup. 
has been on this roster and then on and off in terms of practice squad and active this year. Allen and the Bills, third and ten. His answers makes a hand signal and screens it to Brita working inside with the speed to the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown touchdown pass four on the night for Josh Allen 23 yards to Matt Brita who continues to show that he could be a big part of this offense heading to December yeah watch the left side of the line here just a screen, Bass gonna step up, nice timing, has a couple lead blockers, and then from there it's just really the running back in a lot of ways, setting up some of those blocks. Nice job by his left guard there. Clearing the way, block Malcolm Jenkins, block the corner, sprung him for the touchdown. Mike Butker through the block, Josh Allen's touchdown pass number four. Sixth time in his career he's done that. Bills enjoying Thanksgiving 2021. We're a little uptight. They were unhappy. They were sour after that performance against Indianapolis. The Colts came into their place in a bad weather day and played like the outdoor bad weather team. It didn't sit well with the Bills, and they have come back with a resounding statement. And the Bills Mafia has brought more road fans to a game in New Orleans than I ever remember seeing. I've been here, you know, when, when you guys were over here a couple times a year on Monday nights and been to this city plenty. Usually it's all New Orleans. A lot of Bills fans enjoying the night. We're going to take a look at the Walmart Plus 4K Skycam and zoom in on that Bills defense. Yeah, I've got so much respect for Sean McDermott as a defensive-minded coach. Played against him a lot when he was in Carolina. There he ran a lot of pressure, but here it's really put on the front four. Look at these guys all night long. They rotate about eight guys in, keep them fresh. They're getting a lot of penetration, but everyone contributing. It's sacks, it's tackles for loss, it's plays down the line of scrimmage. This is a very active group of defensive line, and they are able to get pressure in many cases with the front four. Ty Montgomery took out one of the gentlemen who works on the chains there on the sidelines. He was just innocently walking to his next assignment. Speaking of assignments, this defensive front rotates a bunch of folks, and there you see the snaps spread out. Nobody's played over 30 snaps of the New Orleans uh, offense, which is not run a ton of plays thus far here tonight. This will be the 45th coming up. You get a sense of what the Bills are trying to do up front with their defense. Matt Milano with the tackle, Trey Quan Smith with the grab. You know, we saw that defensive rotation. No Vernon Butler. He was inactive tonight. Boogie Basham, the second-round pick out of Wake Forest, was also inactive tonight. Flag is down as Montgomery gets it to the 42-yard line. Pickup of seven. Yeah, you. Outside, defense number 75. Penalties decline. The result of the play is the first down. Yeah, you can see Hughes just jump it. This is this is when those guys are pinning their ears back, thinking it's time to get sacks. Start trying to jump that snap count just a little early there. But you know, this is when that that D line rotation is important. Mm -hmm. you, know, you let these guys tee off for a couple plays in a row, and then you rotate a whole new group in. Fourth quarter pass rush, always so important. Pressure from the edge to the to the secondary, I should say, with Micah Hyde. Simeon goes down, and that pass is incomplete. There's one of those pressures that McDermott used to specialize in a bit more in Carolina. Yeah. Micah Hyde, one of the most complete safeties in the league. You know, really him and Poyer as a group, two quarterbacks on the back end. They can do so much, so versatile. You see them both come in pressure a lot. Micah from the weak side, Poyer from the strong side. But they can play middle of the field. They can play deep half. They can come down and support the run. They're both really good and effective blitzers and just great leaders and communicators on that back end. Timeout taken here by the Saints. You mentioned those two. They've been together now for five years. Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer. They joke around together. We're redshirt seniors. <laughs>
One started in Green Bay. The other started in Cleveland. They get here as McDermott gets this thing going. And it was Jordan Poyer who told us yesterday, it's, this is like the second best connection I've ever had with a player. There's a guy named Chase who was his slot wide receiver in high school yeah. when he was a quarterback. <laughs> That's right. But like you said, now he's quarterback in the defense. That's exactly right. You, you can tell those guys who were multi-sport athletes. Like, there's just something about their instincts and the way they carry themselves and just some of the plays they make. And I always looked at Micah Hyde, even when we played against him in Green Bay, and just said, man, this – this is one of those guys. I think he had 12 letters in high school, football, basketball, baseball. He did. Shot there and a pick on cue. Jordan Poyer's got this one. And Poyer will go down at the 44-yard line. Interception number 16 on the season for Buffalo. And the fans who are left are mostly wearing red and blue. Yeah, you know, you're at that point in the game where you're trying to force some things down the field, try to make something happen. It's just two verticals here. You got the tight end, and then you've got Devontae Harris outside. It's one of those as a quarterback. Just have to assess where that deep half safety is. Maybe give a little pump to that tight end inside to try to get the safety to settle his feet, but Poyer reads it perfectly, makes the play. 20th interception of his career, fifth on the season. And Josh Allen's night is done, and Mitchell Trubisky will come in for the Bills. Saw him closing out the game against Indianapolis. It's his fifth action of the season. Up to the 40-yard line for Singletary. He was tackled by Christian Ringo. So this Bills defense, we saw what they did. They will miss Tredavious White. If he's going to be out for some time, had that knee injury. But you see what they were doing coming into this game. Plus 10 of the turnover margin, second best in the league. The point differential, the, the Bills statistically are in some rare air. They score a lot and don't give up much. It's Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier combining their wisdom on the defensive side of the ball and Brian Dayball on the offensive side. Massive confidence boost off of this performance here in New Orleans, regardless of the offensive struggles by the Saints. Singletary carry takes us to six minutes left in regulation. Hey, you mentioned it earlier, Mike, just talking about how solid and complete this defense is. If Tredavious White is out for any length of time, this, it, it could be really tough for them. And, and because having that lockdown corner presence, you know, they're so good at the safety position, really good at the nickel position, linebackers. We just talked about their defensive line, the way they rotate and keep them fresh. They play at a high level. But if you don't have that one lockdown guy who can match the opposing offense's best receiver. Job by Singletary to get out of the would-be tackle. Still loses a yard, Demario Davis. Josiah Bronson, a rookie out of Washington in there because that is something about that Buffalo defense. It's a lot of single safety to stop the run, make the opposing team one-dimensional, make them want to pass it. But if they're throwing it, you got to be able to cover them. Buffalo Road does get hard. As this is their first of four games. They play the entire run of the NFC South in the back half or back quarter, really, of the season. And this fourth down, it'll be a delay of game. Delay game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. So Buffalo will play New England a Monday nighter in Orchard Park and then go to Tampa to take on the Bucks. Then McDermott back against Carolina, the team that he was a big part of early in the prior decade to Foxborough week 17, Atlanta in week 17. Then they'll close with the Jets. So two games against Atlanta and the Jets at home to finish. You see Dallas comes in here next Thursday night for Sean Payton's team. Then they'll go to the Jets and then to see Brady and the Buccaneers. Matt Hawk gets it away. And it's fair caught by Deontay Harris inside the 10. Four and a half until 
late night snack time. Richard Sherman carried it out like a trophy. Oh, yeah. man, those turkey legs are good. Cam Jordan enjoyed it. Justin Tucker in Baltimore. Roethlisberger. <laughs> Plenty of different options. Michelle Tafoy has seen it all down there with the turkey legs. And I understand the turkey's been prepared. <laughs> there, there they are. That looks good, doesn't there it? There they are. Yeah, absolutely. The table is ready. We missed this last if year. If they have any extras, I might try to sneak down there. No, no, you've had you've had <laughs> you've had your two That's right, runs right. at it. You're right. Enough. You're right. Home and yeah. away. Michelle, last year, Thanksgiving, it was a little bit bizarre. Our game got pushed to a Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock or something like that. But it's good to have the tradition back to wrap up Thanksgiving night. No question. And we've added these, see those turkey leg uh, trophies we got there too? Oh, those are trophies. I, 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 That's brand I, 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 new. I saw let, 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 let's let's see those. Let's, yeah. let's, let's zoom in on those. Yeah, those are actually quite outstanding. They, they look very much <laughs> I, like I mean, you, we it, thought they were real. They Michelle. do look real. Uh, I don't think they're edible. We were going to take, right. take a bite out of one of them. Yeah, I wouldn't try that. <laughs> but you know what? These guys are going to be hungry. They're going to be fired up. You guys, I know, I mean, we're all just looking at this and kind of drooling. Emerald did these smoked turkey legs and uh, there are quite a few of them there but we will have three game balls to give out three yeah. See, but that's next level the emerald edition here in New Orleans is a game changer it should be spicy <laughs> should Absolutely. be yeah Get a little kick to it I'm sure a so. little kick and I think Josh Allen will be uh, front and center there good numbers for Josh He's an interesting and a very neat guy. I had the chance to spend some time with him over the last couple of years covering the Bills. Russo pressured Simi in the throat of the middle is court caught by Little John. Little Jordan Humphrey to the 25 yard line. It's a first down for the Saints with 3.15 to go. Josh's uh, upbringing out in Central California was, was really in a rural area. Uh, then he goes to Wyoming. Remember, he went to community college first. Nobody's really interested in him. And those pictures that we were showing you about his mechanics, nobody's worrying about that. He's got to go to community college seven years ago and then to Wyoming. And, you know, kind of an old soul. Great NFL films feature on him. Listens to Elvis and Frank Sinatra pregame. But uh, he is connected so well with the Bills fans over the years. Really building the neat fireball. There is in Central California. The ranch three and a half miles away. Third generation cotton, wheat, and cantaloupe farmers. Josh worked on that farm. Mm -mm. Nobody knocked on his door. There he is at Reedley College and then Wyoming. And a couple years later, found himself in the AFC Championship game going toe for toe with Patrick Mahomes. Not a bad journey. No. Hitting the uh, two minute warning here. As Simeon. Hands it off. And Ty Montgomery gets a few yards. I had mentioned Mahomes to you because I felt like what the Bills are going through right now was a little bit of what we talked about with Mahomes on the football night set over the last few weeks, Drew, because this was the team that had the wow plays, the exciting highlights, but they were getting frustrated because they saw a lot of the two safeties. And they had to be patient, be patient. And I talked to somebody for the Bills, and they said that's exactly what we were talking about. But maybe a night like this, like we saw with Mahomes on a Sunday night, can get them back to feeling good about what they do. It will, and it settles them down. You know, sometimes you get enamored with these big plays, especially if they're working a lot. And then all of a sudden, defenses start to say, hey, we're not going to give you those big plays anymore. We're going to play you a little different. Let's see if you can be patient. And you go through some growing pains. You know, they, they turn the ball over. You start losing some games. You realize, all right, we just have to get back to the basics, run the football, take the completions, and all that stuff will open up. Mm -hmm. If we can be effective at that, which they were tonight. We'll try to continue that. The Patriots visiting the extra long wait, playing the Monday night after the Thanksgiving. Tony Jones Jr. runs to the 40 yard line. It picks up a first down. A.J. Klein, the tackle. So we have the Abbott post game coming up. Michelle will dish out the turkey legs, the game balls, the turkey leg trophies, the whole deal. And. Drew and I look ahead to Sunday night in Baltimore when the Browns and the Ravens meet. Coming up on the Abbott post game in 90 seconds of game clock time. Well, it was fun to be here with you uh, on this night. I know this is uh, a night where the Saints fans will leave disappointed, but I, I know for you it had to be just a thrill to be back on this field and uh, with everything ending with empty stadium last year to come back here and be able to say thank you to these fans with a full house. Yeah, it was it was so great to be back in this dome with the Houdat Nation. You know, 
think about it, it's almost two years uh, yeah. since right. you know I was in the dome uh, playing you know in front of these fans and, and just so incredible memories. You know they they all come rushing back and you know everywhere I look on this field, I, I think about a play or a moment you know, that we were able to accomplish as a team and and certainly what we were able to accomplish with our fan base and, and so many special memories and just really been an incredible journey and and that's the that's the big part that always sticks out to me is the connection with the fans because of the time you came here after Hurricane Katrina the said I'll, I'll never forget being in here that night in September when the dome reopened and that started this run it was really impressive and you guys put that championship banner up honor to be here with you to see you celebrated on this night and those fans you hear are the Bills fans there are at least a couple thousand Bills fans enjoying the final snaps of a dominating Thanksgiving performance a 31 to 6 Buffalo Bills victory and Sean Payton the Saints will fall to 5 and 6 and Josh Allen and the Bills go to 7 and 4 so on this day when it's all about getting back home all the road teams win Chicago in Detroit, the Raiders in Dallas, the Bills here. The Abbott postgame comes up after these messages from your local NBC station.